Hi and welcome to the channel. Now today's video is about fusible resistors. I had a couple of questions, one ages ago now, one pretty recent, uh, after I did this video on this 217 replacing the capacitor, someone had a problem with some fusible resistors and this has got eight of them in now. Uh, what to do, uh, how to replace it. Now I'm no expert, don't get me, I'm not an expert here, you know, I just want to make sure you know that. And what I did with this is maybe not what you're going to do with your one, I'm just going to show you what I did with this recently. I thought it would be a bad idea just to change them and see how far they are out. But before I talk about that, I just want to say anyone following the cap replacement, I will be coming back to this and uh, start replacing that uh, little coupling cap again with some others. I'm going to prick out five or six others, been given a, quite a few uh, recommendations or ideas to do. I will do that, but it's very, very time consuming. Uh, so it's going to take a while and I'm not going to start it yet, I'm probably going to start in a month or so because I've got a bit of decorating to do around the house that's on a kind of schedule because uh, we've got a kitchen being fitted and I've got to get all the walls ready, plastered, not that I'm plastering it but get someone around to do that. I've got to do all the painting before the kitchen goes in kind of thing. So I've got quite a bit of work to do. I've got some wallpaper stripping and all that kind of stuff in the kitchen so I've got to bore you all with it but it's going to take time and I'm on a schedule so that's going to come first. Get a bit of spare time, I may sing up an odd video that's going to take me five or ten minutes to put together, you know, an hour or so maybe. But uh, yeah, changing these caps is time consuming, very time consuming. Uh, it took me about six or seven days last time. So I will come back to that, definitely going to come back to that, it's just a bit down the road a little bit. Okay, so today is about changing the resistors, the fusible resistors in this particular unit. Now, people, uh, two people, I had two questions, that's all not people. Um, said, what would you do? Well. I'd always say like for like, no matter what it is, if you can get the same transistor that's blown or the same capacitor that's blown exactly the same, all that kind of stuff, like for like, but it's not always the case in some of these older units. Some of these older units, you can't get the exact value fusible resistor. Um, but uh, you, you can replace, you know, the question was really, can I replace a fusible resistor with a normal resistor? And the answer is yes, you can do. Uh, but um, there is some obviously drawbacks here. First of all, uh, it's not going to be fusible. So for anything shorting out or anything that happens, that that particular resistor is protecting is going to cause major damage. You know what I mean? You'll probably end up blowing the output transistors or something like that, where that fusible resistor hopefully would kick in if it's drawing too much current in that circuit, that part of the circuit, would kick in and go open circuit and stop that happening. Uh, so if you're going to replace one of those uh, with a normal resistor, you're not going to have that protection. There is other people saying you could probably put the resistor in with a fuse as well in series and all that kind of stuff. It gets a bit complicated and gets a bit... Uh, a bit big as well, you know, you're going to take up quite a bit of space. So um, I'm going to show you what I did with this. I'm not really worried about putting fusible resistors in here. Hopefully it's not going to blow up. I'm, I'm taking a bit of a gamble, really. It's a bit like life insurance, really, I suppose, or insurance on your house or anything like that. Uh, if you don't do it the correct way or don't take out the insurance, then obviously something goes wrong, it's going to cost you kind of thing. So it's the same with this, you know, the person I asked here, I said, well, try and get a fusible resistor. That would be the best bet, I think, to go down because then you've got the insurance. If it, you know, if it suddenly draws too much current or something like that happens, You've got some kind of backup there. You've got you know something that's going to protect it. With no fusible resistor, you you're not, and it's going to kind of kind of blow up, kind of thing. You're going to cause more damage. Not going to blow up. It's not going to, it's not going to suddenly fly off and hit the ceiling, but um, that can happen. Like you know what I mean? And why would you change a fusible resistor? There's obviously something gone wrong with it. And over age, these resistors uh, do go open circuit. I had one on the Sony uh, STR3, I think, that a uh, receiver. I'd done a review on. I had a, a open circuit. One of the channels had gone on the, uh, you know, no sound from one channel, and it was a fusible resistor. Quite a common fault on that receiver, quite a common fault. Uh, these are supposed to be a bit better, actually. I've been reading, like, I do go around and read all reviews and articles and all that before I put a video up, ain't a five minute job. Um, people saying these are more reliable resistors in here, and probably don't need change, but if they do, obviously you need to change them. Uh, I'm not too sure why these are more reliable than some of the others. Uh, maybe the others are a bit older, etc. But, um, yeah, you know, try and get the uh, fusible resistor you require, I would say. That would be my advice. To, you know, don't do what I've done here. I've, I've changed it for normal resistors. When I say normal, I've, I've upped it to, these were uh, half a watt fusible resistors. I've upped it to one watt metal film resistors, uh, you know, just to cover myself kind of thing. But now I've got no protection. I'm, I'm taking a bit of a gamble, but I'm getting old. Uh, I'm not too worried. If it, you know, I'm keeping this empty for anything. If it suddenly goes, it's, it's my own fault kind of thing. But I would replace it with the original resistor. But anyway, let me just show you what I've done here. Uh, like I say, why would you change them? They can go open circuit, like I say, so one channel may just certainly drop out. The values can change over a period of time. You may, for instance, it's a 220 ohm 
uh, fusible resistor here. That may change, and uh, I've had one before as well. I think it was measuring, it was supposed to measure about 80 ohms or 82 ohms, something like that. It went up to about 500 ohms. So that can change, the, the, the resistance can change over time as well, as well as going open circuit. And when that Sony one I had, just thought I'd mention, come back to that very quickly. There's sometimes a reason why they go. It's not just a matter of just replacing them, thinking, oh, that's fair enough, I'll just replace that. Uh, that's going to be fine. It isn't, something may have triggered that, so you may actually put another one in there and it blows straight away. You may have another fault. Uh, elsewhere in the circuit, um, maybe a transistor's gone short circuit or something like that, something else has happened uh, and it's causing that resistor to go. So ain't it just a given that you change it and it's all suddenly going to spring up back to life. But uh, with the older ones, especially that Sony as well, they, they do seem to go open circuit over a period of time. They just kind of go, nothing's caused it, it's just one of them things, it's just happened, you know. Uh, so that can happen, like you can just go suddenly go open circuit and the rest of the circuit be fine put a new fusible resistor in there and it's going to be fine, you know, you're going to be up and running again. But obviously when you do do, uh, which I'm going to show you on here as well, when you put a new uh, fusible resistor or any parts in there really, you're going to probably have to retune the bias back up as well. Uh, so anyway, let's have a look. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go through a few notes here. Uh, of our First of all, let's have a look at circuit diagram so we can see what the fusible resistors are. Here's the circuit diagram. Uh, we're going to pan it, this is the left and right, just marks off the left and right of the main amp where, where the fusible resistors are, the main amp. Uh, we're going to zoom into the left channel, obviously the right channel is a mirror image, it's going to be exactly the same. So what we're changing in the left or we'll be changing in the right. Uh, and there's a, a little picture there of the green arrows pointing to where it shows you the fusible resistors. A little mark in there, a box with a, a line going from corner to corner showing these are the fusible resistors. And there they are marked up, the yellow ones are 220 ohms and the red ones are 6.8. And don't forget, this is mirrored again on the other channel. I'm doing the left, this is mirrored again on the right hand channel. Okay, now we know what we're looking at, uh, where they are in the circuit that we're going to find them. So we're going to open it up, we have a look here, opening it up and uh, this is the top looking down of the unit. And uh, here we go, the red arrow is pointing to a little area that we will be concentrating on. Uh, if we do a close up of the area there, you can see I've split the green line is split in left and right channel because it looks like we've got uh, eight resistors there, but it's four for each channel. So as you can see, the red ones are the 6.0 ohm and the yellow are the 220 ohm. Like I say, four, you know, I've got two 6.0 ohms on one channel, two, two 6.0 ohms on the other channel, uh, two lots of 220 on one channel, and two lots of 220 on the other channel. Just to make sure you, you know you've got to do both channels if you do it. Obviously, if just one resistor's gone, one channel is slightly distorted, that's another thing that can happen that uh, one of them go high or something like that, or short or something. You may get like a, a distortion in one channel rather than the channel not working at all, uh, a dead channel. You may have just some distortion there, which these can cause. Okay, so uh, they're, they're the ones we're going to be taking out, I'm going to be taking out, and I'm going to replace them for uh, one watt. And they're quite big as it happens, bigger than I thought one watt uh, metal film uh, resistors so there's the, the, there's there they are in the circuit like I say looking down was uh, marked up there red and yellow uh, pointing to them all so uh, if we turn it over this is the spot where uh, sometimes what I do is this, this is the place where the first resistor I'm going to uh, take out and I've marked it there as you can see uh, with a little black dot each side so uh, when I you know I found out where it is matched it up from side to side kind of thing and um, now I'm going to get me soldering on and unsolder but I mark them little dots so I know exactly where I'm going to come in and desolder, otherwise uh, we've got some joints and lots of things on the circuit board close to each other. It's easy to get mixed up. You think you found where it is, you know where it is. You go and grab your soldering iron, you took your eye off the uh, circuit board, and when you come back, you're thinking, where was it? I've lost it already, kind of thing. So I kind of mark it sometimes just to know. Obviously on a simpler board, I don't, but on something a bit more complicated, a bit more involved, I kind of mark it so I know where I'm coming in to do me desoldering. So there you go. Uh, there they are all installed. As you can see, they're quite big. They're quite a lot bigger. They, they're, they're probably four times as big as the uh, original resistors. And sometimes they use them. I've been reading they use them uh, fuse resistors uh, because they can handle. Uh, they can use a smaller resistor, a smaller wattage resistors. Kind of just handles a bit more current, kind of thing. They can they can withstand the heat, kind of thing. Shall we say? Let's get it right. They can withstand the heat more than just a normal resistor. I've been reading that some some manufacturers have used it that way. Well, people think they've used it that way anyway, but um, I'm not gonna say one way or the other. Uh, just one other thing I did read as well, that some people did say, rather than these being like open circuit or reading too high or short circuit or something like that, you know, they can go over a period of time. Is that uh, some people saying once they eat up, they can change their resistance as well. I don't know how true that is. I haven't got any, uh, any experience of that, but just in case as well, they can kind of start off at 220 ohms and as the circuit gets hot and hotter, 
they may come down or they may go up, they may fluctuate. So that's another thing maybe to bear in mind. I don't know. I honestly don't know about that one. Okay, so uh, there they are installed anyway. So what I want to do now is just readjust them to pots for the DC BIOS. Uh, one was about 2 millivolts out and the other one was about 0.6. So uh, just changing their resistors. Um, didn't alter it a great deal, just a little bit, especially the 2 millivolts. So um, yeah, I'll, the video of me actually doing that, uh, while the uh, fuse resistors uh, were installed is uh, up the top there. I'll just give you a link to that, so just in case you wanted to do yawn. Uh, and there we are, there's all the resistors I've taken out. And I did have one broken one. When I, you know, it weren't broken when I took it out, but as I grabbed hold of it with my fingers to pull it out, it kind of disintegrated, as you can see there. Um, and uh, obviously it still works, it still reads the right resistance. Uh, it's just the casings come off there where they, where they put the kind of enamel case or whatever they put on it. Uh, with the bands on it, the colour bands, that's just come off, but it just shows you over time they kind of like fatigue a little bit. But uh, reading all these, I actually read them all on the meter, and the 220 ohms, I kind of got a, a variation between about 220, 221, uh, right up to about 226. So they weren't far out at all, they, they were well within spec, and the 6.8 ohm ones, they read correctly as well. So there's nothing wrong with these resistors here. I took them out for, for no apparent reason, really. Uh, but I've done this video with it and talked about uh, fusible resistors and now I know that uh, they're kind of going to be okay, like I say, I'm not protected, but uh, they're going to be spot on now. I've readjusted the bias ready for when I uh, come and do these uh, capacitor tests with the next batch of capacitors I'm going to get. So that's it. So that's this little video talking about uh, fusible resistors. You're probably going to have quite a few opinions yourself down below. Maybe you want to leave them for other people to have a look at as well so they can get a gist if they've come over here. To look at uh, replacing the fusible resistor but again my advice would be try and get the exact value uh, the exact fusible resistor you require best to get another fusible resistor and maybe not do what i've done i've took a bit of a gamble here but uh, if you can't get the exact value you can maybe match um, a couple of up in series or parallel or something like that i'm not too sure about parallel you won't be able to do well you know but in series you'll be able to do but in parallel you won't because you actually uh, be using um, twice the uh, the rating fuse wise kind of thing i should imagine uh quickly thinking about it at the top of my head uh but yeah so uh, maybe um try and get the correct one if you can't then maybe just go over to a normal resistor knowing that you're throwing the dice maybe taking a little bit of a gamble that if something else went wrong you're not going to be protected and you may blow up maybe an output transistor or a couple of other bits and pieces in there that's uh it's going to be a bit of an headache maybe to find replacements or repair so uh, yeah again my advice would be try and get the uh proper resistors okay that's it uh until the next video i'll say thanks for watching and i'll see you all soon